Hi everyone and welcome to the seasoned stock strategy video. Today you're going to learn about one of the most simple strategies that can make you wealthy in the stock market. And how can it do that? Well, I'm talking about a strategy that can have you experiencing short-term gains of 100%, 200%, 300%, even as much as 500% returns in a matter of days. And with this strategy, these kinds of gains are possible in a matter of days while risking very little capital. For example, I'm going to show you a recent trade I took in FGP, it's Feral Gas Partners, where I was risking as little as $35 per position and in just five days made a whopping 385% return. And at the end of this video, I'm going to reveal you five different super trades coming up in the near future, all of which have the potential to generate these kind of short-term returns. And there are multiple opportunities like this every single week. For example, there's a two-week period in September that has been historically bearish for energy stocks. And SeasonStocks.com revealed a specific opportunity in VLO Valero Energy Corp that again made 275% return in just four days. And you're about to learn this exact strategy. Now to begin, I want to introduce to you what is the most logical, simple, straightforward way to approach stock trading. Seasonal influences on individual stocks are incredibly powerful. For example, Pool, P-O-O-L, is a company that is all things pool related. It is the largest pool related parts and product supplier in the U.S. Now when do you think demand for pool might naturally increase? Well, if you guessed before summer, you would be exactly right. And in fact, here are some stats for pool based on buying the first calendar day of each week in April. And it doesn't matter when you buy in April, based on these stats, pool has consistently moved higher. So week one, pool has moved higher 84% of the time over, over the course of about 16 trading days. Week two, 89% of the time. Week three, if you were to wait to buy pool until week three, it still moves higher by 84% of the time. And then if you were to wait again to buy pool until the fourth week of April, you're talking about a probability of, of movement higher of 89% in the past. So this is a strong seasonal play in this stock. Now there are a couple other things that these stats reveal. They also show you not only the frequency higher but the average move up when the stock has moved up and the average move down when the stock has moved down during this same time period. So obviously Seasonal stocks are not an absolute for sure thing, or seasoned seasonal influences, I should say, are not an absolute for sure thing. The stock can and does move in the opposite direction during that same time period from time to time. And in fact, in the future, you never know what's going to happen, which is why I'm going to show you this strategy to increase the probability of success during these already high probability situations. But with the average move higher here, if you buy in week one, you can see it's uh, the average move higher over that 16 day period is 8.78% while the average move down is only 4.22% and then it also gives you a net gain based on that week. If, if you would have taken this trade just bought based on the first calendar day of the week and held for 16 days over the course of however many years this is, I think this goes back to 1992 in this particular stock, you're talking about a net gain of just this one trade of 127%. So that is a tremendous opportunity and you can see that um, as the month goes on that opportunity just gets better. So this is a very logical way to approach stock trading. Now you'll notice here that it has a detailed report. So if I can, if I want to look at the detailed report on any one of these given weeks, I just click on that and what happens is it gives me a bunch of more information, uh, gives me more information about that week, gives me more information or shows me a current 
chart of pool and as you can see this is um, this is current so this is a, an opportunity that is in April of next year so um, we are looking at a current chart then it shows the last five years and how pool has performed over the last five years and gives you stats on that and then it will show you that uh, the end of that 16 bar period or 15 bar period and you can see uh, that um, what the stock has done in these last five years even after that 15 bar period and you can see sometimes it continues to move up sometimes um, it moves down a little bit so uh, it just kind of gives you a feel for how that stock has moved and then if you scroll down a little further it will give you a year-by-year -year breakdown and so you can see that there are some years for example in 2012 where pool did not move higher during this period um, and then again in 2006 and then again in 2002 but all of these other years all the way going back I couldn't fit all of them on this um, on this spreadsheet but going back all the way to 1992 and um, pool has moved higher starting in week three of April 88 percent of the time so this is a tremendous uh, this is some tremendous information and I'll be coming back to this as I explain the strategy so here is uh, the strategy I'm going to start with the FGP buy the buy opportunity and this is part one of the strategy there are two parts to the strategy number one is determining the uh, opportunity and then number three executing the op or part two is executing the opp uh, opportunity okay so the first thing that we're going to look for is we're going to look for consistency across multiple weeks we're looking for consistency across multiple weeks so you're going to see here that FGP in August starting in week one was up 90 percent of the time and this was 19 trading days and then if you were to wait and buy at week two it's still up 95 percent of the time if you were to wait till week three still up 95 percent of the time going forward and then week four 85 percent and then you can see in week five it starts to wane a bit so you can see that august is a really strong month for feral gas partners fgp and ac actually for several of the gas stocks it's pretty bullish but this is the one we took so the first thing that we do is we look for a cluster of solid weekly opportunities and that definitely constitutes a cluster two or three at minimum two or three at minimum um and then the longer the the better the opportunity is with regard to uh, this particular strategy then um, as far as the degree higher or the accuracy higher we want that cluster to be around 75 percent or higher 75 percent or better and you'll see that with feral gas it was 90 percent 95 percent 95 percent 85 percent that's that's tremendous if we if all of these four were 75 percent then um, it would it would certainly qualify as a potential opportunity so um, look for a cluster of solid weekly opportunities two or three at minimum and then at minimum a cluster uh, should have 75 percent movement higher or better and then the next thing I do is I look at the net move higher versus the net move lower okay look at the net move higher versus the net move lower so you'll see here in feral week feral gas partners week one of August the average move up was 4.88 percent the average move down was 3.79 percent and then you can also take a look at the net gain uh, if you had done this every year it's looking at 8.2 or 80 um, 80.23 percent of net gain just from this one single trade being taken so after that um, and by the way what I'm looking for there is about a one-to-one -one. if it's about a one-to-one -one average move up the average move down then it's going to qualify if it's not quite a one-to-one -one, it really depends on you know how, um, on perhaps the cluster how strong the cluster is how strong the move is because what happens is if, if the stock has only moved down one time and it happened to be a big time it's going to skew that result so you definitely want to take a look at that um, a little bit closer but as a general rule I'd like to see one-to-one -one 
on that. And of course, the higher the number is, the more lenient I'm going to be. The higher the um, percent accuracy, the more lenient I am going to be on that. Then we look at the high point and low point. Okay, we were looking at the average high move or the average move higher and the average move lower. Now we're going to look at the low, uh, at the high point and the low point for each year. For each year, so. Here is the high point and the low point for each year, starting on August 1st. So that's the open date of this. And the low point we're buying was only a half percent in 2013 during that entire period. But in 2012, you'll notice that the low point, it had actually moved down almost 11% before it ended up moving higher and closing higher by 0.9%. But look at the high point there. And that's really what I want you to focus on is the high point, 5.7%, 9.25%, 3.26%, 8.06%, You get the idea. So there's a good, solid, healthy high point after buying on August 1st. And um, there's going to be some low points in there. But the high point, I want the high point to be average um, to average greater than about 5%. If that high point average is greater than about 5%, which it easily does here, uh, then I've got a really, really solid opportunity. Okay, so that's it for uh, for part one. Very simple. Look for a cluster. Uh, you look at the average high versus the average, or the average move up versus the average move low, lower, and then you look at the high point and the low point. And all you're doing is determining whether that is an opportunity you want to take advantage of. The next part, which is part two, is actually how you execute taking advantage of the opportunity. Now, as a general rule, I don't just buy the stock or sell the stock if it's a sell opportunity. And the reason I don't is because there's a much more efficient way to do that. So what I do is I look at an option chain. So on August on August 1st, I was able to buy an August 15th expiration 25 strike call for 35 cents. Okay, so let's take a look at the chart of FGP just to sh show you this particular trade. You'll see that um, moving into the trade, the stock had moved down. Now, a lot of people would say, you know, why would you do this? The trend is down, and they might offer a whole host of reasons why you don't want to do this but as I was saying before seasonal influences are fairly strong and so on August 1st which is this date uh, which is highlighted here this bar uh, the the FGP closed at 24 just above 2440 and I was able to get a 25 strike call for 35 cents expired in two weeks and this is the blue line where that strike is so what happens after that? Well, here is the chart moving forward. As you can see, it immediately began moving higher. And in fact, just a few short days later, we were able to exit those calls. We exited at 135. We bought them for 35 cents, exited them for 135. And so with a 10 option, if, if you traded 10 options on this one, risking $350 worst case scenario and made a thousand dollars in literally five days or actually no I apologize we exited this one on a 11 literally in 11 days we made a thousand dollars risking no more than $350 on an opportunity that had a very very high probability of success over the past so the season stock strategy part two is based on buying cheaper options and the first thing that you need to understand is we buy cheap short-term options and I'm going to show you how to to determine which exactly options you want to buy here in a second but once we buy those options then there are several things that you can do number one you know that your risk is absolutely limited to the cost of the option so if the market absolutely tanks and goes the other direction and this trade is completely wrong which it will be from time to time uh, your risk is absolutely limited so um, you know that the, you know that going in so there are a couple of different ways to exit a profitable position number one exit at half or partial position maybe a third even at a hundred percent target 
And if you do that with half your position, that means that you cannot lose money no matter what happens moving forward, right? You'll break even if it then turns around and the option immediately goes to zero the next day because the stock tanked, you will have broken even on this particular trade. Some people like to do that just as a matter of uh, security. Uh, however, it is more profitable to hang on for a larger winning trade because you're going to find that these larger winning trades do not require a very big move in the underlying stock to occur. So if it's right, it's going to provide generally a pretty good opportunity for a bigger uh, possible profit. So another uh, potential exit is the exit partial or half or if you want to hold on to all of it at 300% profits. And I'm going to generally look at about a 300% target just simply because if I want to stay in I'm going to switch the option to a cheaper option I'm going to lock in those profits by doing by doing it that way um, but these are just suggested ways of taking advantage of this there are many many different ways to take advantage of, um, of a profitable trade but whatever you decide on be consistent with it that's going to be my suggestion uh, regardless, you then can also exit partial on the last day, or you can hold, even if you hit your targets, you can hold a partial position until the last day and possibly let the trade run. But again, that's um, even with switching the options. Once I hit 300%, I'm pretty much going to exit that option, and I may re-enter with another cheaper option so as to continue with a high uh, profit potential. But... Um, then locking in some of those gains. So here is an example in General Electric. And this is not one of the five super trades, by the way. So this is a bonus, kind of like Pool was a bonus uh, coming up in April. That's on down the road, though. Nonetheless, GE, General Electric, starting in November, week one, you can see 66%. Uh, it's moved higher than week two, 70%. And then in week three, 74 percent, and you start to get these uh, the, this increased bullishness in uh, GE until you hit week four of November, and the stock has moved up. If you buy in week four and hold on for 18 trading days, 85 percent of the time, and the average move higher is 506 versus an average move lower of just 2.2 percent. That is, uh, those are tremendous numbers right there, and a great opportunity. So. I find this type type of opportunity, and, and I will be looking at GE come November in week four. Um, but I look at that opportunity, and um, then I take a look at the, uh, how long the opportunity will last. And I can see if I start in week four, it's 85%. But going into December, week one, 85%, week two, 81%, and then week three, 74%. So there's an opportunity to hold on potentially for a longer term gain. So I may do that, I hit my first 300% target and then reposition with a cheaper option until um, the opportunity has pretty much exhausted itself. So this is all available by the way with seasonstocks.com which I'll show you here in a bit. But once I've determined that then I go and I look at the high point and the low point and I can see that the high point uh, provide some very solid opportunities, uh, sometimes better than others, but as you're going to see, it doesn't take a very big opportunity to generate a potential profit. So um, that all works. So the next thing I do is I pull up that option chain. And this is where you decide which option you want to buy. You've already made the decision, okay, GE, I definitely want to get into GE. The question is, what option do I buy? Because there are a lot to choose from, right? But there's a very logical, straightforward, easy way to determine which option you want to buy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at current option opportunities. So the current option opportunity, just to show you the example, I'm not going to buy GE right now, but come to, come uh, the fourth week of November, this is what I'm going to be doing. This is the process that I'm going to be um, going through. So. Uh, come the fourth week of November, I'm going to be looking at the options, and I'm going to look at options that are three to four weeks away. And even though I know that GE is going to last, the opportunity is going to last for the next five weeks, possibly, 
I'm not going to buy an option with that much time on it because those are more expensive options. Um, but I'm not going to go super short term either because the shorter the option life, the faster the, the uh, time decay. So I'm keeping, oops, sorry, I'm keeping all that in mind. And I'm going to generally go about three to four weeks out as a general rule. And that gives me plenty of time on the option and gives me plenty of time to swap the option before the last week, which I'll get into here in a second. But nonetheless, right now, GE, at the time that this video was made, is currently trading at 25.20. So a 25 strike option is in the money by 20 cents. Okay, so 25 would be in the money. That's our benchmark, basically, what we're going to look at and we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the option prices to find the best potential return based on not a big move in the stock but maybe an average move in the stock during this time period so we're gonna look at basically a four percent move and there are many many times where the the average move was bigger um, on that sometimes it didn't quite make that and on those you might not um, you not, might not make your 300 percent return nonetheless Notice on October 24th, expiration, 26 call, which is here by the green arrow, is priced at 15 cents. Okay, it's priced at 15 cents. Bid ask of uh, 14, 16. Um, you can get filled at 15 cents, no question. Uh, high volume in this stock, so it's a great opportunity. Now that is out of the money, and that's fine, um, because what we're looking for is we're looking for the highest potential gain. Now, if GE moves higher by $1, that's a 4% move in just one week, then my 26 strike call is going to be equal to the current price of the October 17th expiration 25 strike call, or 50 cents. Okay, now let me go through that a little bit slower, just in case you didn't catch that. The market is trading at 25.20 right now, so I'm looking at a 26 call. If GE moves higher by $1, then the market is going to be trading at 2620. All right. And that will mean that my 26 call will be in the money by 20 cents. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a one week call, or we're going to look at a call that is 20 cents in the money one week later. And that is by this green arrow. So the 26 call, if the market moves higher by $1 in one week, will be equal to the October 17, 25 call. That call is currently worth 50 cents. So in other words, if GE moves higher by $1 in one week, then my 15 cent option will increase to 50 cents. And that is a very good projection, by the way. This is a very accurate projection. If it doesn't, obviously, um, if the market goes nowhere, then my my 15 cent option is going to drop to 11 or 12 cents, right? So it doesn't cost me much to hold on to this thing for a week. If the market moves higher, great. Um, I could make as much as 233% on a 10 lot with a 4% move in the stock. If I go with a 2550 strike, okay, so let's start saying, let's start looking at the different strikes and seeing what the return would be. If I go with a 2550 strike, which is one above this green arrow, I would pay about 31 cents. If the market were to move higher, then I would look at the 2450 strike, which is up here, again, one, one above the green arrow. That's a 2450 strike, and it's worth approximately 86 cents, or a gain of 177% on the same move. So between the those two options, which one provides a higher return? Right? The 26 strike option provides a higher return than the 2550 strike option. So I automatically know I'm not going to trade the 2550 if I had had it to choose between those two. I'm going to go with the 26. Now, I automatically know that any um, strike higher than that is, or lower than that, is going to produce a smaller return. So I'm going to go with a higher strike option. It's going to go even further out of the money and look at the 2650 call. And that call, which is right here, is trading for $0.07. Cents. OK, 
Okay, so one below this green arrow. It's trading for seven cents. And if GE moves higher by one dollar, then that option will then be worth approximately 25 cents. And that would equal a gain of 257%. So out of those three, the one that provides the highest percentage return based on the same move is the 2650 call. And so that initially is the one that I'm going to look at. And it's very easy to figure out which one you want to look at. You just def divide the October 17th option by the October 24th option. Right, so you divide the October 27th 25 expiration put, which is 50 cents, and you divide it by the October 24th 26 strike option, which is 15 cents. So this represents what will happen if GE moves higher by $1 in one week. And in that case, uh, that yields a number of 3.33. Uh, the 2550 call using the same formula is higher by is uh, the number is 3.57 and then the 2450 is only 2.77 so clearly what we're looking at is the 2550 call um, is going to yield a higher return based on the same move that's the one we want it's at 3.57, so that's perfect. Except for one thing that you do have to remember with these cheaper options, and that is commission. If we add a two cent commission, which is what uh, about what we're going to pay at Interactive Brokers on this, so it's not it's not too bad. Um, then that changes that number to 2.77. Okay, it changes that number to 2.77. So that actually drops it below the 15 cent option or the 20, uh, 25 strike call, excuse me, the 26 strike call. All right, so because of the commission now, we're better off going with the 26 strike call and we're going to, um, we're going to buy fewer options as well with that uh, because it's a higher price. So just take that into consideration, and if that drops it with a, because the option is so cheap, you want to go probably with the next one higher, and that's just a logical thing that you uh, want to look at. So um, essentially, this is the best way to determine which option you want to buy. Um, it's low risk. Uh, you have a high potential gain off of a um, off of an average movement of the stock, and your risks are absolutely limited. So what we do is we just decide how much we want to risk on any given trade and we divide that price by the option and you have the number of options you want to buy. So I'm going to say let's risk $150 on every trade and I divide that by the cost of the option which is $15 and that's going to mean that I buy 10 options. And I never include commissions when I do this um, I generally include commissions on my target um, so that um, I just add like two cents to my target so um, that it's very simple for determining the uh, the best option to buy when you've determined which stock you want to get in now this is how powerful this is you only have to make 300 percent on 33 percent of your trades Okay, so you may get into a 90% probability trade move to the upside. You only have to make 300% target, an average move higher, 33% of the time. And then you can completely lose the maximum loss on, the, in, on all of the other trades, and you're going to break even with this strategy. So the key to this strategy is that you are consistent. But in the GE example... If GE moves down by a dollar and never goes up, you lose 100%, right? And you and you stay in the option until expiration, which I'm going to suggest that you not that you don't do that. But if GE moves down by a dollar and never goes up, you're going to lose 100%. Now I say if it goes down because if it goes down, then it's going to suck the the value out of that option, and you may not be able to get out. But if GE moves higher by a dollar, you're going to come close to making a 300% return during that week. All right. So 
an equal size move higher makes three times what an equal size move lower loses. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume, even though we have the seasonal influences backing us and increasing the probability of ultimate success, we're going to assume a 50-50. We're going to assume that the market moves higher 50% of the time and the market moves lower 50% of the time. And in that situation, you have a profitable scenario with this uh, strategy, mathematically profitable scenario with this strategy. Now, if the market goes nowhere, you're going to want to exit or replace the option before there is a there is one week left on the option. So that last week has the highest time decay. And the key, if, if you'll remember in GE, if the market went nowhere during that week, the drop went from 15 cents to maybe 11 cents. So you get out, you may lose four cents on that, and the market didn't basically didn't go anywhere. At that point, you can switch because that 11 cents will then drop even faster the following week if the market continues going nowhere, um, or at least by the by the uh, time that there is only one week left you want to be out of that option either out of the option and out of the trade or out of the option and switched into uh, another option that has a little more time on it so that's the general rule of how you want to do that now with season stocks the, the question obviously is where are you going to find the seasonal opportunities and it's very difficult out there and um, very difficult to find any good information out there which is why we provide and created seasonstocks.com to to give you this tool for quickly determining the best seasonal influences now there are three different subscriptions but I'm gonna tell you you want the platinum subscription I want to tell you that up front you want the platinum subscription if you're just kinda of kicking around you want to watch them then you might want to go with the silver or the gold the silver only provides you the top 21 opportunities it's not going to give you all of them it's just going to give you the top 21 opportunities every week and then um, you're going to have a seven week range three weeks before the current week and three weeks after you can search all of those during that seven week period but it's only going to give you the top 21 opportunities you're not going to be able to do a single stock search um, etc etc the gold member gives you a hundred opportunities the hundred best opportunities so yeah there are that many so what we're doing is we're trying to weed those out um, and I'm going to show you that as we get um, go further into the strategy we're going to try and weed those out so that we are um, taking the best opportunities the top the top one opportunity may not be the best opportunity because we may not be able to get a, a good option in that or the chart may look really horrible um, or there may be a host of other reasons why the very top opportunity may not be one that we can take um, but the platinum gives you full access to every single seasonal opportunity at any given time so you can do a stock search and you can see all 12 months of any given stock and um, and what it provides or you can look at any week in the future so you can prepare uh, you can go and you can look at April for example right now and you can see all of the opportunities that exist for April you can filter through them there's advanced filtering there's sector breakdown all of that we'll get into that as we move forward and I show you the five super trades that are coming up here in um, here in a bit but with the platinum this is what a single stock search looks like and I'm going to show you why you want to do this and why I do this it's, it makes it the easiest um, but this is feral gas partners and when I do a single um, single stock search it gives me all of the months I just scroll and so here's August and I can scroll down they will give me all of September and I can scroll down and give me all of of October and November and December and all of the months you get the idea in exactly this format so I can get a very good feel for this particular stock during that particular time and what I'm you know basically looking for is where it's not up 90 percent one week and down 50 or 6 or 70 percent the next week and up 80 percent the next week I'm looking for some consistency as um, as I have uh, stated but let's take a look at the five super trades to get a better feel for um, the process and I'm going to go through the entire process in this first one and show you 
what you'll see with season stocks. Um, so you log into season stocks, and if you're platinum, you can go all the way to November. Um, if you're gold or silver, you can only go three weeks out. So you can click on this, and it'll go three weeks before. Uh, you can see the current one, or you can go three weeks after. That's silver and gold. Platinum, you can click on this here calendar, and you can go to any week of the year at any time. Okay. Now, the first thing that you're going to see is that it's going to break down all of the opportunities by sector. And um, it shows you what these sectors are, and it's going to um, show you how many of those are buy versus sell. And this is some handy information, as you're going to see. But then you scroll down, and um, you can see that it allows you to sort. And right now, it's just sorting by frequency. And um, so it's going to give you the top opportunities during any given week. And this is week three of November. Uh, excuse me. Whoops. Um, you can see this is week three of November, November 15th through 21, which is right there. And you can see, for example, the, the second best opportunity from an accuracy standpoint is Moog Incorporated. But look at the volume, 600. And again, this is all opportunities, not the best opportunities. So for silver, you're not going to, or excuse me, yeah, for silver, you're not going to see many of these because we keep it to um, New York Stock Exchange. But with this one, you can see that's not one that we're going to be able to take advantage of. Um, McGee is an energy, and it's the volume is 60K. We might be able to take advantage of that. Maybe not, but here's GAB. That's 646K. That's some good um, good volume. There's finan It's in the financial sector, so we can take a look at and see how many opportunities or buy opportunities in financial. Um, we can take a look at the average move up, average move down. Very, very favorable. This is one that you can take. I'm not going to give you that one. That's uh, that's. This is almost like a bonus. If you want to take a look at week three and GAB, you most certainly can do that. But that um, it, I'm just showing you what you're going to see when you log into season stocks. Now, what I do is I sort, and I sort by closing volume. Okay, so I sort by closing volume, and um, when I sort by closing volume, this is this is the opportunity that comes up. You can see the top opportunity, and it is by volume, highest volume, so it's not necessarily the best, but it's the highest volume, is in AT&T, 24 million, 83% higher. And then the next one is AKS, AK Steel Holding, that's 85% higher. And both of these have very positive average move ups versus average move down. And then the next one is Banco uh, Santander, and that's in financials, obviously. And then you scroll down, and it's going to give you all of the opportunities. And literally, there are about 300 during the week, third week of November. Um, so I'm going for the most volume. There's XOM. That's an energy. Uh, there's GLW. Uh, and then there's United States Steel Company X. Notice that AKS and X are in the same industry. right? They're steel companies. And two of the top volume opportunities are in the steel. So I'm going to look at AKS. That's what I'm going to do. I come to week, the third week of November. I see this opportunity. I want to look at that opportunity specifically. So I type AKS in the search box. Okay. I type AKS in the search box. And what happens? It gives me the entire, all of the opportunities for the entire year. And here's November. Week one up 70%, week two down 80%. So guess what? I'm not going to be getting involved in these. I'm not going to try and sell generally in week two. I may take a look at the chart, um, but it's unlikely that um, I would do that because there's not a cluster. So it's not quite as high of a probability. And it's sandwiched in between two solid weeks, right? So here's week three. Again, I saw it in week three. So of November. So now I want to look at week four. Wow, 90% higher. It's a favorable average move up and an average move down. Week five is 88% higher. So again, um, there's a nice cluster right there starting in week three and then going in December. Look at this week four, week, uh, excuse me, week one of December, week two, week three at 95% and week four at 85%. So this is a 
This is an extended opportunity. It's a, uh, very solid with, if you look in week two, for example, the average move higher is 13% versus 6% move lower. Um, so that's very favorable. That begins to change in week three and week five, but look at week three, it's 95%. This is skewed. It's average move down to 16%. That is skewed, and it's skewed because it's only a couple of times, so one big move will skew it. So um, that's not a um, an accurate number. So this would not prevent me from getting involved in week three if there was an opportunity. So there are going to be several opportunities. This is a super trade, right, because you don't need a huge move to make a huge po uh, potential return while your risk is absolutely limited. So the first opportunity is going to be an AKS, and that's starting in the third week of November, and it lasts all the way through the end of November. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull up an option change starting in about the second week of November, and I'm going to start planning my uh, trade for the third, starting in the third week of November. So that's the first one. Number two is UN. UN. That's starting in the fourth week of November. And that goes through the end of December. Now, what is UN? Well, UN is a food processing stock. So it makes complete sense that UN might have a buy opportunity going into Thanksgiving and Christmas, right? So here's November of uh, UN, week two, starting to look pretty good. Uh, then week three, 75%, 75%, and then look at week four, 93%, and week five, 96%. And we've got about a one-to-one -one ratio on all of these. And again, there's not very many movement down. So um, there's nothing wrong with that at all. This is a very strong play. So along about week two of November, I'm going to start planning. I'm going to pull up an option chain and start planning um, how to take advantage which option I'm going to want to um, take in UN. Uh, then the next one, whoops, sorry, uh, number three is Intuit, I-N-T-U, Intuit. It's a technology stock. And that one is coming up really quick, as in you can start looking at it now. As a matter of fact, I, um, I started uh, positioning into that uh, last week uh, because it, the chart looked favorable uh, in addition to a, an upcoming seasonal favorability. So you can see week one, I'm a little, uh, I was a little aggressive in week one, got involved on uh, uh, October 2nd. And then you can see that in week two, it really picks up the probability looking at 95% higher. And that average move up is 15%. Listen, that's going to provide a huge potential gain in a in an option if you get the right option. Uh, with week three, it continues higher. Week four, 85%. And week five is 80%. Um, the size of the move is a little bit lower, but the the um, uh, duration of that trade is also shorter. So that's a still a solid gain for just a five trading day period. That's into it. It's a tremendous opportunity. This is a sector. This is a, a particular sector, and um, same industry is Cisco. And you can see that there's an opportunity in Cisco, and I actually bought in Cisco as well, just to give me some diversification within this particular industry. Um, not quite as strong of uh, stats, but still very, very solid. Solid move higher, solid probability of move higher going all the way out to five weeks. So that just is confirmation. That's kind of a bonus there for you. Cisco is available now. Number four, I'm going to give you a selling opportunity. HDR, HDR, starting in the first week of November through week four of November, HDR provides a selling opportunity. So look at here. Week 1, 2, and 3 of November, starting in week 1, 86% down, 7.8% move lower versus only a 2% move higher. Uh, that's very, very positive with 86%. So I'm definitely going to look at buying some puts in HGR. And then the opportunity lasts to about week 4 um, because this is buying in week 3, or excuse me, selling in week 3. And then starting in week four, it looks like it begins to bounce. So I'm gonna, not going to 
look for um, very many multiple opportunities in this. I'm going to look for an initial move down, and then I'm probably going to call it a trade. Then on the fifth one, Mattel. Mattel. Starting in the third week of October, so that one's coming up really quick as well. And uh, obviously all of these are within the next um, within the next uh, four to six weeks. So Mattel, great opportunity here. That's obviously basically a toy company, uh, juvenile um, products is what it's under. Here's October. Starting in week two, it starts to pick up. I may start to look for an opportunity as early as week two. We'll see. But week three, it really picks up 88%. Week four, 84%. Week five, 88%. Um, the average move higher starting in week three of October, 8% versus 2% down when the market has moved lower. Um, tremendous, uh, tremendous potential opportunity. So I'm going to pull up the option chain on this um, here in the next coming few days, actually, and start to plan that trade. Okay. So you get the picture. There are a lot of great opportunities to choose from every single week. The combined seasonal influences with my option buying approach is a one-two punch that is simple, logical, and very efficient as well. Now to be sure, there are definitely going to be times where this does not work out. Okay, Seasonal influences are not the only influence in the market. Matter of fact, I recently took a trade in Scholastics, S-C-H-L. Tremendous trade, been, been trading it for the last four years with really good success. This year, it never gave me an opportunity. It went straight down. And we're talking about a 90% uh, a 90% stock during the month of September and that stock did nothing but move down. That's going to happen. So the key to long-term success in trading this strategy is proper money management. Don't ever let the statistics uh, get you to uh, trade more than you should on any one given opportunity. So proper money management and volume. You need to trade more than just one opportunity in order to uh, skew the probabilities of long-term success in your favor. One is not going to do it. Two is not going to do it. But you'll notice, based on, for example, FGP, the very first example I gave, I made $1,000 in in 11 days. $1,000 risking no more than $350. So that's um, there's some solid opportunities out there. So you start out risking small amount on each trade, and as you experience success, then you begin to compound it. You begin to increase your risk level. Now, if I were to take 10 trades a month, and that's what I'm going to suggest, is, is look for the best two or three opportunities in any given week and stick to those three, two or three. So average maybe 10 trades per month, and if I'm risking $150 per trade, and I um, end up making 300% on half of them, and I lose the entire 100% on the other half, this comes out to $9,000 a year without compounding. Now, this is risking if you were to lose, if you were to lose 100% on all 10 trades your first month, you're talking about only losing 100, uh, thou, excuse me, $1,500. Only $1,500. Okay. So this is this is um, a solid opportunity. Now, as a bonus to platinum subscribers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to include a special compounding, so that a compounding plan that if all you do is make nine thousand dollars over the year trading this type, of, uh, risking one hundred fifty dollars per trade, and taking an average of ten trades and and seeing fifty fifty, either three hundred percent return or or fifty percent or a hundred percent loss. And of course, it's not going to work out that way. So I'm just kind of giving you a a even if it doesn't work out very well scenario. Um, you're looking at potentially compounding that nine thousand dollars of profits into over eighty grand, eighty thousand dollars in just one year. Okay, now if you start with only five thousand dollars, again, you can start with only five thousand dollars because you're only going to lose. Worst case scenario, if all ten of your first trades lose the entire amount, you're talking about only fifteen hundred dollars. So you can definitely do this with a five thousand dollar account and play volume and be consistent and apply the 
the compounding plan and turn a $5,000 account into over 85,000 in just one year. You're going to get that plan and there you, you have the, actually the opportunity to do much better than that if you uh, end up doing better uh, than just $9,000. Less than $1,000 a month total in that profits. If you do better than that, you can do much better than that in the compounding as well. So that's it. It's simple, straightforward, very powerful, and it's something that is very, very simple to execute. Anybody can do this. Even if you only have to do one option to start with, anyone can do this to get, get some trades under your belt and some experience before you begin to move into a higher risk on a per trade basis. So now these are the prices, silver, gold, and platinum. Uh, if you were not to watch this video right now, in other words, if you just go to the site, these are the prices that are listed on the site. However, go to the special link on your email. Um, go to the special link in your email. There is a special price for a limited time only, and you can get these at a much uh, lower price. So go to the special link. Don't go to seasonstocks.com, the normal page. I'm giving you a special order link. Look in your email box for that order link to get a much better price on uh, this subscription. You're, I think you're going to love this strategy and you're going to love what the season stocks uh, provide you. Um, you're not going to find this information out there. It's very difficult to find the, the seasonal influences the way we've put it together. So this is some really valuable information for you. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I, I will go ahead and show you those five opportunities again so you can take a look at those, list them, and watch them if you want. That's our gift to you. Um, you know, hopefully they'll work out. If not, there are many others, and the key to this strategy is consistency. So my suggestion is commit to it for a year. Commit five grand to it for a year if you're skeptical about it, and just see what happens. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Just follow the guidelines, follow the, the basic guidelines that I've given, and there's some great opportunities. Okay. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions, contact our support uh, via email, and they'll be more than happy to help you.